Some time ago, I reviewed the Blue Eddy EB70S power station and felt that overall it was a very well built, very capable source of off grid energy. However, I did say there were a few features about it that I felt could have been better designed. Well, now Blue Eddy has sent me the EB3A, and not only have they corrected those small annoyances, they've taken the performance to the next level. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. All right, before we get started, just a few things I want to mention. First, I would like to thank Blue Eddy for sending me the EB3A so that I could share it with you. Another thing I want to mention is that I will not be going over all the same information I did about choosing a power station for your use. I did that quite extensively in the review of the EB70S. So what I'd like to do is refer you to go back and have a look at that video for that information. Of course, I'll link that at the end of this video. And and put that link in the video description below. But what we will do is go down to the tabletop now where I'll go over the key features for this unit. I'll go over the physical and performance specifications as well as the operation and I'll share my experiences with it. All right, let's get started. Just before we take a closer look at the key features for the EB3A, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So it comes with an, an AC charging cable, as expected. It also comes with a solar panel cable. So if you happen to have a solar panel, even if it's from another make and it has these connection points, you can still use it with your unit. It comes with an operating manual, which is very good. And the manual says repeatedly, do not throw this away, keep it. And for a good reason, it has a lot of detail in here that would be easy to forget otherwise. And something, very important is the warranty information. So please do, if you decide to buy your unit, to register your unit for its warranty because uh, it has a 24 month warranty and not that I've ever experienced any problems with either this or the first one, the EB70S, but it's a sizable investment. So protect your investment by making sure that you have registered for the warranty. So quickly, the physical specifications for this overall weight for this unit, 10.14 pounds or 4.6 kilograms. The measurements for this unit is 10 inches across in this direction, 7.2 inches from the uh, table up to the top and seven inches in depth from front to back. All right, let's go over the key features for the EB3A, but I won't go into any great detail on each of them because I will be explaining them in more depth later. So overall, right from the top, it has a capacity of 268.8 watt hours, which is great for the size of this unit. What's even more impressive though, is it will put out a total of 600 watts. That's, that's very impressive considering that the EB70S puts out 800 and it is more than twice the size of this. It will have a certain surge capacity of 1200 watts, which I'll explain more about in a few minutes time. It does have a power lifting mode, which allows you to use at least temporarily any type of an appliance that will draw more than the regulated 600 watts. It has a maximum input of 430 watt total. Now that's impressive because what that basically means is that you can put energy into the battery from multiple sources at the same time. You can use an AC charger. In fact, you can use two AC chargers. I'll explain later. You can use AC and solar, AC and car, 12 volt car DC, a number of combinations. With all the conditions right, you can get the charge time, time down to 1.2 hours. Now that truly is impressive. It has pass throughs charging, which means while the unit is being charged, it continues, it can continue to be used to put power out as well. It has a UPS bypass mode. So basically it will work like a UPS unit, uninterrupted power supply you might have with your computer. Should the power go out, then the battery will kick in. But while the power is on and you have house current, it will pass through this unit directly to your machine. So it's not charging or running through the inverter. So there are no electrical losses. And of course, as I mentioned, it does come with a 24 month warranty. 
So a moment ago, I mentioned that the EB3A has a storage capacity of 268.8 watt hours. So let's just talk about that for a moment and what it means to us. So to achieve that, it uses the lithium iron phosphate batteries rather than the less expensive, lesser quality lithium ion phosphate batteries. And what that means is that you can get 2,500 life cycles from the batteries in this unit, and that's before they reduce their holding capacity to 80%. So at that point, if you did happen to use it or recharge it 2,500 times, you can still use this unit. It just means that it won't store the full capacity as it does when it's brand new. That compares with lithium ion batteries, which only have 500 life cycles before their storage capacity is reduced to 80%. The unit, of course, has MPPT controllers. And I just want to talk about what does it mean when you have 200 168.8 watt hours. How long is that going to last you? Well, first off, we talked about this to more extent in the video with the EB70S. Uh, and what I want to share with you is that there is a formula for calculating how long this battery will last. And it begins with knowing what the wattage is that the, the appliance or whatever it is you want to use draws. So for what, an example, I can tell you that if your appliance is, draws 100 watts of power to run, then this battery will last approximately two and a half hours. Now, 100 watts is quite considerable. My fridge, my refrigerator here at home draws less than that. So I can run my refrigerator off this, although not for an extended period of time. So it's a matter of choosing the appliance or the devices you want to charge and match it up with the capacity. And again, the formula for calculating how long the battery will last, I'll put in the video description below. All right, let's go over the output ports for the EB3A. There are eight in total. Let's start with the AC alternating current and down in this corner, there are two output ports here. They run at 120 volts, five amps for a total of 600 watts, pure sine wave with a surge of 1200 watts. The pure sine wave is important for any number of devices that require a clean uh, source of energy, such as medical devices and many others. Now, as far as the DC output we have to start with, we have two USB type A five volt three amp outputs here and one USB C fast charge port putting out 100 watts of power. We have the traditional 12 volt 10 amp car output, often referred to as a cigarette lighter, and just below them are two. 5.5 millimeter outputs, which are also 12 volt, 10 amp, and they are all regulated. There is one more on top, which is a, a wireless charging pad for cell phones or other devices that will accept it. And this will operate at 15 watts. All right, as far as recharging the EB3A goes, this unit has two input ports and they can be used simultaneously. So first we have the traditional AC input port and this is just a cable input, meaning there is no external brick. Everything else is built inside of the unit. Just have to plug the cable in here and into the wall of your home or wherever and to start charging. The other is a DC input port over here and this will take DC input from a variety of sources, including a solar panel, your car charger, a cigarette lighter, and even use another AC charging brick like the one that came with my EB70AS, and I'll share, show that how that operates in a moment. There is one more feature. I haven't emphasized it too much. It is the LED light right up here. It's identical to the one on the EB70S. Nice little feature, not something I can see using a whole lot, but what I like about it is you don't have to press this power button in order to either turn on the DC or the AC. They have their own power buttons which will operate independently of the main power button. What pressing that will do, of course, if you long hold it, it will turn on the light, but if you just quick press it, it will turn on the display and show you the status of what's going on inside of the battery. All right, I thought the best way to 
talk about the display is to actually make use of it. So before I start plugging things in, let me just show you the features that it has. So on this side is the ingoing wattage. So when I plug it into the wall or into a solar panel, it'll tell me how much power is actually going into the battery. And on the opposite side is the outgoing wattage. So when I plug an item in to operate it or to recharge something, it'll tell me how much power is going out of the battery. But it is the center portion of the display that really uh, is something that I think is a big improvement over the EB70S. So what you see in the center is telling me that there is 94% of the battery's capacity still available to me for use. And you can also see there is a half circle of blue over the top. That's a graphical display showing me the same thing as well. But maybe a little bit more challenging to see is underneath where it says 94%. Uh, there's something that I have to do every once in a while the display still times out after so many seconds. And again, what the bottom is a smaller display and that tells me how much time I have left in the battery based on whatever the outgoing charge is. So we'll see that operate in a minute. So I think the easiest thing to do is start plugging things in and we'll make this thing work. So we're going to start with the DC side of things. So quick turn on. You can see DC is now on by virtue of that little green light. So I think the first thing I'll do is plug in my cell phone. Now this is an older generation of cell phone. It isn't, or I can't make use of wireless charging and it doesn't charge very fast, but we'll plug this into one of the USB type A ports and very quickly we should see a very small power drain over here. So running three watts, that's all the phone is taking. And it's telling me at this point that I have 30 hours, 30 hours of battery left by running just that. Let's plug something in that's a little bit bigger battery and that is this flashlight. So grab this cable, get it untwisted from the others, plug it into the other USB-A port plug it into the flashlight and right away it jumps up to 13 watts. So between the phone and the flashlight it's drawing 13 watts of power. Again the display times out. So 13 uh, watts of power being drawn off and I still have 15.2 two hours of battery left or 94% either way you want to look at it. All right, let's turn on the AC port. Again, green light showing my AC is active. And what I'm going to be plugging in is just a small household fan. It's a heater fan combination, but I know from experience that it will not run with the heater going. That draws way too much current and it'll just shut the unit down and show me overload. So I will just run it on fan only for a few seconds here because the fan makes noise, but I just want to show how much current it will draw. So I'll turn it on low. And immediately I have a total outgoing current of 35 watts. So that's between the phone, the flashlight, and the fan. I think I can turn it up. And it's telling me now I'm running at 42 watts outgoing. So I still have 5.4 hours of battery left at that rate. Okay, I'm going to turn the fan off. In fact, I'll actually unplug it. I think I will unplug the other device as well just to uncomplicate the screen. So what I want to do now is showing, show you what the input works. So this is the charging cable that came with it. I'll plug it into its port here on the side and very shortly we should start to see the input charge. Let's turn the power source on. Very quickly we should start to see the input uh, power going into the device. All right, it's recognized the power and it's telling me there are 260 on average, getting a little higher, between 260 to 68 watts going into the device from the AC source. Now what's nice about this is that there is no big brick with its own fan like the EB70S has that will call, that generates a whole lot of noise. Everything is built in. Now there is a couple of modes for charging the device. I'll talk about those more when we get to talk about the Bluetooth app that is on my phone that came from Bluetti. But you can actually change the rate at which the unit charges from a standard 
to a turbo mode, which will charge much faster, you'll hear the fans come on right away because, of course, it has to keep the batteries cool, to a quiet mode, and it will just charge over time. So if you're not in a rush to recharge your battery, you can run it on quiet mode. It's much easier on the battery because there's less heat to generate it as well. Again, the display timed out 267 watts going in. Now, if I have another source of power, I can plug it in next door. So this is the cable that I would attach to my Blue Eddy 200 watt solar uh, solar panel, but it's not a day for using solar panels, so I won't be able to display that. I will at another time, of course, when I do the review for the solar panel itself. But if I had the solar panel hooked up, I could plug it in here, and the combination of both would add power even faster to the unit. Or if I had a plug that I could plug into my car plug in uh, the car, then I could put that in there as well. One more thing you can use is another brick like this. So this is the power bank or power brick that came with the EB70S. And it is something that can be plugged into this unit. So you can actually have power coming into it from two sources. Now, these bricks are noisy, so I am going to plug it in. But as soon as I plug it in to the power source, it's going to start making noise. You can probably hear it running already, and that's without even plugging it into the battery. So now let's bring the back on again, plug it in, take a second for it to be recognized, and we're starting to jump. There we go, 260, 200, and, yeah, 260 or so. It's jumping all over the place as it uh, does so, but you have power coming in from two sources at the same time, so it shortens the amount of time it will take before the battery is fully charged. Now, the fans have turned on inside of here because, of course, there's much more power coming in. You've got to keep those batteries cool. All right, so there is one more feature of the EB3A that I haven't talked about yet, and that is the Bluetooth app that allows you to take your Apple or Android phone and connect it to the unit so that you can turn it on and off, do some other features, and there's even some additional features that can only be accessed through the app. So I do have the app downloaded, and there's the icon. Let me open the app up. You do have to recognize the phone. It's okay. It's recognized the, uh, the devices, so they are paired up. And as you can see right now, hopefully, making sure that you can get too much glare, uh, the phone has shown me that the battery has 98% precisely as it does on this side. Now, what's kind of nice is that you can turn on the AC and DC from your phone. So let me start by turning on the DC. Hard to do upside down. Now you can see DC is turned on over here. The light is on. And just below it is the AC. So the AC is now turned on. Now it's indicating that power is emanating from the battery through DC and AC, but it's not showing any load because, of course, I don't have anything plugged in. Um, again, my display timed out. But so that is very cool. It's also showing that there's no current going in. So it would do so otherwise. Now, up here is the settings button. My big thumbs. Here is the power lifting mode. So I'll just quickly demonstrate or discuss what the power lifting mode does. So the way power lifting works is that it will allow the unit that you've got plugged into it to draw greater than it normally would handle, than this battery normally would handle in terms of wattage. But it does so at the expense of voltage. So uh, really the only type of devices that you should be plugging into this and using with power lifting are things that are purely resistive in nature, like a, something with a heating element, like a coffee maker or a curling iron or something like that. And if you use those, what will happen, and I did try this with the coffee maker, is uh, that coffee does not get as hot. It takes longer to brew. And uh, yeah, it doesn't work really well. It is an expediency that if you need to use a device of some type, you can use it, even though the power draw is greater than you would normally use with this power bank, but it's going to do so with less performance. So you have to decide if it's worth it at all. I can turn that off. Now, there is another uh, 
icon right here for eco mode. Now eco mode, what it does is it allows you to determine how long the unit will stay on before it turns itself off to save energy. So a standard eco mode is four hours, but you can change that with a setting there as well. Now there is one more thing. Oh, this is always cool, I guess. You can turn the light on <laughs> remotely and you can turn, where is it again? You can turn the light off remotely. Small thing I know, but it's kind of neat that you can do that all from your phone. So when I opened the video up, I'd mentioned that BlueWitty had gone a long way to correcting some of those design deficiencies that I found in the EB70S and corrected those in the EB3A and took it obviously to the next level. So where, what were some of those deficiencies? Well, they, they weren't deficiencies so much as just small annoyances, things you'd say, why did they do it that way? And I think the biggest one right off the top that kind of got to me was the display. The display on the EB70S was just a five bar power level. So for every 20%, you would get a bar that would indicate where you were. It was not very accurate and didn't really tell you, not very precisely at least, how much power you had left in your battery. This is so much better on this one with a visual display that says exactly what your percentage is, exactly how long your battery will last, depending on how much your current you're drawing, and a visual display to add to that. So huge, huge benefit. The other thing that the EB70S does not have, but this current generation of Blue Eddy devices has, is the ability to input power from two sources simultaneously. So you don't have to settle for just solar panel or just AC. If you have both available to you, you can plug both of them in and literally double the, tar the power going in and half the time it takes to charge the battery. That's huge, that really is huge. And I'll speak more to that in a moment because I think that alone makes up for the smaller size that this battery actually has. Um, something that was more, again, an annoyance, it doesn't perfect performance, but the power brick that came with the EB70S, I mean, it's effective. You're never gonna overheat your batteries with the fans in it, as well as the fans in the unit itself, but it just seemed to be unnecessary for the fans to be running constantly, regardless if you're charging the power bank or not. And it was a huge, heavy brick. It, it had a purpose, it had a function, I understand that, but it's been corrected. That's not there in this unit. I like that you can plug in just the wire and, uh, you know, and if you have it on the uh, slow recharge, you don't even hear it. If you have it on the turbo recharge, you do hear the fans, but they're nowhere near as loud as they are on just the power brick alone, let alone the power brick and the EB70 together. So I think that's a huge improvement. Now, there is one slight comment that I'll say on that, and I don't feel it much of a negative, but I've heard other reviewers say that they would have preferred to see the place where you plug your power cord in to be on the back or on the side of the unit to just uncomplicate the front of the unit. All right, small thing, maybe. Is it bother me? Not in the least, to be honest. I, I don't mind at all that the input power are both on the front of the unit. In fact, I think I would prefer to see them both together right there. It, for me, it uncomplicates things, having to reach behind and find out where to plug things in. So that's all I'll say about that. Now, one small annoyance still exists, and that is the timeout on the LCD display. Why it has to be so short, I don't know. It's not like it's saving any energy. It's very, very light current draw. Maybe it's because of the brightness, okay? Um, you know, a couple things could be done here, especially with the Bluetooth app, is why not have it so that you can change the brightness or intensity of the LCD display, LCD display where you need it bright during the day and you don't so much inside of a trailer or a tent at night. And maybe you can change how long it stays on before it times out. Are they deal breakers? Oh no, of course not. Those things are minor and very, very minor at that. As you can see, you just reach around, touch one of the buttons and you can see. Plus, if you're looking at your phone, you don't even have to look at the device to see what is happening there. So those things have all been taken care of with that one small thing being the timeout on the LCD display. Overall, this has been some huge improvements. All right, let's wrap this video up and I'll talk about my experiences with it. All right, let's just talk for a few moments about the experiences I've had using the EB3A. And the truth is, 
I haven't had to use it near as much as I did the EB70S. I've, we've had no major snowstorms or power roadages uh, yet that have put it to the test. And, and if I do, if I have a major power roadage, I still have the larger power bank that I'll continue to rely on. The way I'm looking at this smaller power bank is something much lighter, much smaller, that I can take with me and go places that the other one is just kind of big and awkward. I'm thinking now that when I do car camping for two weeks off grid, that it may be this one I take and not the larger. And the reason being is I will now be able to recharge it with the 200 watt solar panel that Blue Weddy has sent me. I have yet to review, but that review will be coming. And I can charge at the same time with any AC current or with my vehicle at the same time. So where it doesn't have the overall capacity the larger ba battery does, it's recharged time is so fast, I think it makes up for its smaller size. Plus all the other features that it has just make it a little bit more convenient, a little bit easier to use than the larger battery. Make no mistake, the larger battery has more capacity and can run more uh, power intensive devices than the smaller one can. Not a lot more, but still more. So the bat bigger battery is still a better choice if you have a, a use for a lot of energy that the smaller one won't provide for you. Uh, I have been using it around the house, mostly for testing purposes, running small things. I tried it on my coffee maker, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. That's essential, right? You have to have a coffee maker. It won't be an electric one. It'll be something more uh, what doesn't operate on power. But I've charged up my phones, my tablets, and flashlights, and things like that, and it's done so without failure very quickly. So um, it continues to operate just the way it's intended. I'm looking forward to using it with an off-grid refrigerator and other devices charging like well, all my camera equipment, lights, and everything else that I, I have to use when I go camping. I don't have to, but I use when I go camping. Okay, I, I think that's enough for the time being. What I'd like to do is open it up to you. Do you have any experiences with the Blue Eddy EB3A that you'd like to share with me? Do you have any questions or comments about it? If you do, put them all in the comment section below. I will, of course, be putting all the information for the EB3A plus the links to where you can purchase it in the video description below, as well as a link to my review of the EB70S, the larger uh, battery bank that I reviewed previously. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.